Hello and welcome to this Linear Electrics video about single phase motors. In this video we will look at capacitor run and capacitor start motors and you will find these types in use in domestic situations, in commercial premises and all across every type of industry. We will look at the basics of how this type of single phase motor works, how we connect the wiring to make it work and answer the frequently asked question of how we make it go backwards. These are the basic components of any single phase motor. We will have an incoming single phase supply, L and N. There will be two windings and either one or two capacitors and perhaps a switch that is built into the motor. A single phase supply on its own is not enough to cause the motor to operate correctly. We must do something to it and we have shown the incoming phase in red here. This incoming phase passes through one winding but the second winding has a capacitor in the circuit. This capacitor causes the phase on that winding to become out of phase. It is all to do with lead and lag in alternating waveforms and we will cover this in detail in our basic electronics series. By introducing a capacitor into just one winding we have now created two waveforms from one. In this example the red phase is leading the green phase and this imbalance causes the rotor to begin to rotate. For now, just notice the positions of the A and B boxes on the drawing. Once the rotor is rotating, it will continue to do so as long as the electrical supply is maintained. To cause the motor to spin in the opposite direction, we must rearrange the order in which the two windings are connected together. Notice that the positions of the A and B boxes have changed from the last slide. If we take the terminal cover off the motor, what will we find? Inside is a six post terminal block and some brass links. The way that these links are configured will determine in which direction the motor spins and we will cover this shortly. The incoming supply is also connected to these terminal posts and on our drawings we have left the earth off for clarity. A word of warning the posts are often made of a brass alloy and can easily be snapped off or have the thread stripped. So please do not over tighten. Located inside the motor around the rotor shaft is a centrifugal switch. Two or more springs keep the centrifugal switch in the closed position when the motor is stationary. As the rotor spins, this centrifugal force causes the weighted blocks to spin outwards and open the switch. There will also be a capacitor mounted either externally, close to or on the motor or alternatively mounted in a compartment inside the terminal box. On some motors there will be two capacitors and we will explain why in just a few moments. Let's begin by looking at the terminal block. It is important that you understand how the windings and other parts are connected to this. The bottom row of posts are labelled U1, V1 and Z1. However, the top row is out of sync with the bottom row. The top row is labelled Z2, U2 and V2. And this misalignment helps us to connect the motors correctly with the links. We will look at the common arrangements in this video and some manufacturers will have their own preferred layout. But if you understand the common arrangement, it is easy to understand the more unique configurations. First of all we have a U winding shown here as a little red winding between U1 and U2. This is how I visualize the terminal block. My brain sketches in the winding across the block. Then we have the Z winding shown in blue between Z1 and Z2. And finally we have the V1 and V2 terminals. The centrifugal switch is connected between these two connections. If we look at a very basic motor circuit we can see that we have a number one winding that is called the U winding. Then we have a number two winding or Z winding that has a capacitor attached to it. This is called a permanent split capacitor. The circuit is permanently split between the two windings. Each winding has two ends so we have U1 and U2 and we have Z1 and Z2. How we connect the U's and Z's together 
determines the rotation direction. You will notice that we've also included terminal V1 on this drawing and others. We need somewhere to connect the capacitor and V1 is convenient for us. Another type of configuration is the capacitor start capacitor run motor. Now we call the U winding the run winding and the Z winding is called the start winding. There is a permanently connected run capacitor as before but now we will also have a start capacitor that is installed in the circuit and disconnected by the centrifugal switch when the motor reaches speed. Let's look at motor direction. In this configuration U2 and Z2 are connected together on the terminal block. This makes the motor rotate in direction 1. Now we have changed things and U1 is connected to Z2. This causes the motor to rotate in the opposite direction, direction number 2. And the same principles apply to motors with a star capacitor in addition to the run capacitor. So you can see that changing the connections between coils will change the direction of rotation. Let's look now at how these changes are made on the motor terminal block. Here we have a permanent split capacitor motor. Notice that one link is connecting Z2 and U2 and the other link is connecting U1 and V1. The capacitor connects between V1 and Z1. The live or phase cable connects to Z2 and the neutral to U1. If we want the same motor to spin in the opposite direction then we must change the position of the links and the position of the incoming phase and neutral. Now we will link Z2 to U1 and U2 to V1. The phase stays connected to the Z2 terminal but we must reposition the neutral onto the U2 terminal. The incoming supply cables must always be in line with the links. A capacitor start motor is wired as shown here. Notice that the switch is now included in the circuit. When the motor reaches running speed the switch will open and disconnect the Z winding or start winding and the motor will continue to rotate just on the U or run winding. The capacitor is now connected between Z1 and V2 and you can see that the supply cables L and N are again in line with the links. To reverse the direction is again just a matter of repositioning the links and the supply cables as shown. Always keep the supply cables in line with the links. I make no apologies for continually stressing this point. If you don't reposition the phase and neutral when you move the links you will hear a big bang when you switch on. Please don't make this mistake. So now we can move on to a third type of configuration. This is the capacitor start capacitor run motor. Both windings and a capacitor are permanently connected as in the permanent split capacitor motor. But now there is a second start capacitor that is in the circuit during starting. When the motor reaches speed the start capacitor only is disconnected. The terminal block configuration is shown here. The run capacitor is between V1 and Z1 whilst the start capacitor is between Z1 and V2. To change direction as with the other motors change the position of the links and the position of the phase and neutral. In general the run winding should be connected between U1 and U2 and the start winding between Z1 and Z2. A resistance or continuity check will show the run winding to be the lower of the two resistances and the start winding will have the slightly higher resistance. In both cases we are only talking about a few ohms for either winding. They will be low resistances. Following the same pattern as the windings the run capacitor will be the smaller capacitance and the start capacitor will have the higher value sometimes four or five times greater. Here are some typical values of resistance and capacitance. Every motor type will have different values determined by the manufacturer and these here are just a guide. If the run winding was about 5 ohms then the start winding may be around 8 ohms. A 25 microfarad capacitor may be used for the run mode and a capacitor 
of 125 microfarad for the start phase. If you measure across the switch, this should read 0 ohms whilst the rotor is stationary. Just to repeat myself again, when changing the motor direction, always keep the phase and neutral supply in line with the terminal links. A common problem that you may come across is where the customer reports that the motor just sits there buzzing but not moving when first switched on. However, they say that if they give the shaft a nudge, the motor spins fine until it is switched off again. In these cases, suspect the start capacitor or wiring is faulty. Or the start switch or switch wiring is faulty, usually stuck in the open position. This means that there is no second winding or capacitor in the circuit to give a phase difference that will cause the motor to rotate. Without some initial movement, the rotor will not spin. Always exercise extreme care when fault finding motor circuits and always ensure personal safety. Electric motors do not take prisoners. When the motor starts, the motor starts, even if your fingers are in the way. Always practice safe isolation before working on any motor circuits. As we have shown, single phase motors are not self-starting, unlike three phase motors. They must have a second winding and a capacitor to create an out of phase current that causes the rotor to begin to move. Once the rotor is spinning, a magnetic field is created that can sustain the motor rotation. There are advantages to using single phase motors. They are very low maintenance, small in size and inexpensive. They are ideal for low power applications such as refrigerators, pumps, fans, compressors, vacuum cleaners and drills etc. And of course single phase is much more available than three phase. However, if there is a disadvantage, they do not like frequent start and stop duty cycles. Switching on and off frequently can cause overheating of the motor. And always install motors with an appropriate overload device. Well, there we are. We hope that you found this video useful and that you have put more knowledge into your mental toolbox. There are many more videos to come on a wide range of subjects. Please click on the subscribe button below to have access to all of our videos and please press the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. Subscribing also helps us too and we really do appreciate this. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.